Well, welcome. I'm so glad you're here. This video was made for the hashtag event, hashtag CAC Fantasy Art Creative Arts Collaboration Group. If you're done watching my video, I would love it if you would go type in the hashtag CAC Fantasy Art and you will get to see all the other artists that have joined in in this event. Well, this is going to be a pretty long video. Mostly, I'm going to try to give you as much information as I can to make these beautiful art pieces in glass. So it's basically taking your artwork, any jelly prints, anything that you have, background papers, any beautiful artwork that you've made, and put them in glass and hang them. And also using scrap glass pieces to make beautiful hanging stained glass work to hang in your windows, to hang in your house, wherever you want. Before we start in this workshop tutorial, I'd like to just say, caution-wise, I would suggest and hope that you would go take a live class on stained glass and soldering. This way you'll learn how to cut glass and solder without getting hurt. And then also there are smells associated with soldering and if you're pregnant or have any problems with smelling things, I suggest take caution before starting any project like this. If you already know how to cut glass and solder, uh, this will be just fun for you, maybe something different than you usually do. I just want to inspire you to use your skills in a different way. There are also ways to do some of these projects without having to cut the glass and solder. And I will go over and talk about that throughout the video. Okay, so we're gonna get ready to cut some glass. So these are pieces that I had left over from some projects. And I've got my blade, and you can see I'm holding my blade. I've got my scoring stick, which you really need to have to cut your glass. You need both. And the blade is at the end of that. And what you have to do with that is you have to fill it with uh, glass cutter oil. And um, I use a non-toxic, you have to put it in. Um, you will ruin your blade if you do not. So you want to, if you're going to do a lot of cutting, you'll fill it up a lot. I'm not going to, so I'm just going to put a few drops in, in the barrel and um, then close it up. And there we go. I'm just using an eyedropper and just dropping some in. That's the easiest way to do it. Now I'm going to be getting out my flux and I usually use uh, liquid flux, but in this instance, I'm going to be using a paste, which I've never used before, but I can't find my liquid flux, so I took my husband's flux, and you need to use flux uh, for the, uh, not for the cutting of the glass, but when you go to put the uh, solder the glass. So I'm, I'm just showing you, um, there's different kinds, and right now that's all I have is the paste, and there it is, and thank goodness my husband had some. Okay, so now I'm going to take your, your cutter and you're going to score your glass. You're going to hold your scoring stick down and then just run your blade over the glass, making sure that you always use the smooth side to cut on because some of the glass has bumps, some of the glass has, like this one, has some things added to it, and now you'll take this. And this is just, a, a, you just press on this and it splits the glass where you've scored it. So it just helps. And there, I've got two pieces there to use. And um, you can grind with a hand grinder or you can use an electric grinder. And I do have an electric grinder set up in the garage. It's, you know, I mean, it's over 10 years old. I've had it, so and it's still working, so I'm so excited. And I'm going to do that. And it has water in it, the grinder. So to help that blade, and it just works really great. cut on that side because that's the bumpy side. It has to be the flat side. And then you just, and I'm just going to do some odd pieces. And you can hear that zzz, that means it's cutting, it's scoring. And then it just pops on your, you hear that zzz, it sounds like a zipper. And that means that it cut. 
and then it just easily comes apart like that. And here I am showing you packages of the black back copper foil. And I have different sizes of this. this. These bags I haven't even opened yet, but I do have a lot that has already been opened that I was using. So I'm going to use the ones that I have open. Hopefully they're still in good condition. Now this is sticky on the back. So when you pull the paper off, it has a sticky back and then you lay it on the glass. So. Um, it's very helpful and it works well and this is what I have used all the time in my stained glass projects and now I'm taking these two pieces of beveled glass that I had a whole box of that I was using in some stained glass projects and I'm going to show you what I am going to do with these okay, so I have here's some of the glass I've ground it down around the edges so it, they're not sharp I mean they're, they still could be so you could still take the you know the the little grinder and make sure that there's no sharp edges especially if you're not going to foil it if you're going to foil it then that's okay but if you're just going to use it like this which can I mean that's what I'm probably going to do with these pieces and I'll show you all the pieces that I, I did and these were all just little you know pieces that I had left over from this is actually some I used this for the water in one of the projects that I did with little fish in it it was so pretty for my um was actually my first project and um, did it for my daughter's my oldest daughter has that one so just you know make sure that you don't have any you just got to be careful not to rub your finger, kind of pat. But I did grind these with my electric grinder, so. And then look at this piece. I love this. So I'm not using a lot of color pieces, just the blue. And then these with the little wisps of little hint of colors and stuff. Look at that, how beautiful that is. Glass is just, it just amazes me. So there's no sharp edges. Can you see that it's ground? And then there, I can just wrap it. You know, I can take pretty wire and just wrap it around and then, you know, make a thing on the top and And just hook it and just do it very loosely and very and then just you know have things dangling from it um, depending on how much of this you, you know you can have beads and jewelry whatever you have hanging from it and then hang that up in your window and you've got like little stained glass pieces and you don't have to do much so um, I'm not going to be putting solder on these. So I'm going to solder the other pieces that I put together like this because I'm going to put artwork in here, some of my artwork in there, and then I'm going to solder this. So this is pretty heavy. So these have to be soldered because I'm putting two pieces together. Now this must be, Oh, let's see. What do I have in here? I think these are those I used to do these and uh see if I have any around. That, are that little. They're very little. Oh, no, 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 no. These are those other pieces. Oh, these are cool. These are already smooth and these have a hole in them too. So what you can do is you can just um uh, collage pretty pictures on here or you can paint it and just hang these too. That's what these were. I forgot I still had more of these. Wow. Here I just took out, I took out some pretty papers that I had done, you know, these are originals, but I could, I have them all on my computer so I could always print them out and not have to use my originals. So if you have any jelly prints or, you know, background papers that you haven't used yet, here's another piece. Just you know they're great to put in these glass pieces and then you can write some nice sentiments in them and give them as presents or just hang them in your house 
I will try my hardest to find the links to where I purchased these glass uh, pieces, this bevel glass. But if you happen to have a glass supplier near you, a stained glass shop, anything like that, they can also get them for you. Okay, so let me show you what I did. I printed out some of my girls uh, a little bit larger. I could have made them a little bit more narrow because um, I measured the glass and the glass is like, let's see, one, one and a half, and I think I just went a little over two with these, so I could have made them a little bit narrower. And they're um, six inches, six inches long, these glass pieces. So, I mean, you can cut regular glass, too. You don't need to have the beveled. Just, that's what I have, so that's what I'm going to use for these. And um, so you can see how that, that would be in there. And they printed out, I printed them out, and I can't say this enough, and I say it in all my workshops, if you want to get the best pictures ever printed, make sure that you use the proper paper. If it's not coated, then the colors will just absorb into the copy paper. I used HP or Epson uh, presentation brochure paper it's coated some of its double coated double sided and some of its coated on one side so you have to make sure that you put the proper side uh, to be printed on but the colors come out magnificent and then when you go to print uh, make sure that you color sync it with your computer I always color sync my Epson printer with my iMac and then this way it comes out beautiful it picks up the colors and I only use Epson ink in my printer I have tried using the cheaper quality and it doesn't work it just does not come out the same um, I know the Epson ink or the HP ink their inks are so expensive but if you're selling your prints or you want really good copies to use like I'm using in this project you want to make sure that you use quality print uh, printer ink and paper now I'm just laying the little beveled glass pieces over the pictures to see, you know, what I, you know, how I want to cut them. And uh, I will be cutting them with my knife, not a scissor, because I want to make sure that they cut nice and straight. And I'll use my scoring uh, stick to do that. Uh, and I'll be using my, not my cutter for my glass, but my regular, um, regular knife cutter. And... Um, just making sure that I get them in and you want to make sure that when you cut you cut a little bit less than the glass you don't want the paper sticking out at the edges so when you're cutting just make sure you come in just a little bit so this way you are not popping out of the sides so here I'm just laying it over my Bohemian Dreamer Gypsy and I'm going to be doing her first and she's going to be going, you know, that way, horizontal and um, real cool. And I'm going to put copper foil around her and I am going to make a back picture for her. And that's another thing because you're going to have two sides if you do this. So you want to make a picture for the back side. You can just make two copies of the same. Okay, you can see that I put the two, let me just this cord put the pieces together. I'm going to go over this now. I, I printed I, out some more of that of her hair. I didn't want another one of her so I just printed out some of her hair and some of the background. It's so pretty. So I thought that would look nice on the other side because you have to have something on the other side. So you can either print two pictures the same or do something completely different. And this is just a tool to use to get your foil down nice and smooth. And I foiled this and didn't show you because I had such a hard time doing this. Uh, I'll show you on a smaller piece in later on in the video. And what this foil is, it's a black backed foil. So it had, this is sticky and that sticks to the glass. and. I had I forgot where my um, I have a little thing that you put your you put your foil in and then you put your glass in and you go around it and it really puts the foil on evenly and um, so I didn't have that so I just used 
my eyes and um, try to get it on. Okay, so then once you get it on, if you have to trim it, you use your your knife and you can trim it because you want to make sure it's even, especially where it meets. Now right here is a seam, so I don't want one side lower than the other. So if it does come and you get the seam together and one side's larger, cut it. Just take your your knife and just cut it so this way it's even because that when you go to solder is it's just a mess and you want it to look nice so and then um, this is just a you just keep pressing down till you get it you want to get your foil down well because once you start to heat it with the solder you don't want it to come up because that'll ruin everything so now at this point if you didn't want to solder I mean you wouldn't have to they have silver foil so you could just foil just make sure all your edges are nice and clean and you could just foil it you wouldn't have to solder and if you like the copper then you could just leave it like this but I need to solder because I have to put the hooks up so I have to give it to hanging if I wasn't going to hang this um, I guess I could actually put wire around this way and hang it that way if you wanted to do that instead of soldering and that would look nice too but since I started this I want to at least do the one I haven't done this in so long I mean years and just keep going over it until it feels like it's nice and attached and when you're putting your glass together make sure that your paper isn't sticking out because you want to make sure your paper is a little bit smaller than your glass and it doesn't matter because you're going to put the foil around it so you're not going to even notice it so because you don't want paper sticking up in here so always cut your paper to be a little bit smaller than your glass so that it's not sticking out it doesn't have to be that much smaller just a little bit but I love I love seeing my artwork in the glass it just looks so cool so it's very important that you don't hurt yourself you can get burned very badly um, you can actually start a fire so make sure everything that you're using and soldering on is um, a fireproof surface that it's not going to get hot and burn down the house so please take precautions when you're soldering silver gleam this is a uh, stained glass solder it's lead free and you can get this online and you can get this on Etsy there's a lady on Etsy uh, that I used to buy it from years ago I'm sure she's still there and you can get the silver gleam this is the best one and um, so you don't you don't have to deal with the lead okay so I have been playing I have never used this pasty uh, flux before but you need flux otherwise your solder will not stick so I'm gonna put it on now I have, I have a clamp on here to hold this because this gets hot so you have to be real careful and I have this metal piece underneath can't find my what you do is you, I'm not, now I'm, I haven't done this in a while so you just drop your bead on and then you just and do not get burned okay so you just kind of put that on there and then go around the whole thing like that and then make sure you have your whatever piece on something so you can hold it without burning yourself because it the glass gets hot the whole thing gets hot so you can see and just put a little bit I'm just gonna put it just a little coat of it on and make sure you get it all and um, cover your copper 
don't work it too much because it will get hot and then what happens is the copper foil will start the glue will start coming up so you don't want to do that so you know try to get it as smooth as you want it I don't really care I mean this is not anything that's like a necklace or anything so I'm just gonna go around and keep doing that and um, this I believe that this silver gleam um, has to the iron has to be pretty hot for this one I think it this one for some I think the silver versus the lead the lead free one the iron has to be a little hotter but you can look all that online and like I said before if I if you really wanted to get in this into doing this I would take a class and have them really go over all the techniques on how to solder I hope you're enjoying this video and if you are please give me a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already thank you tip so I'm gonna let this cool and then do the other side but I want it to cool down because it's getting way too hot and then my my copper foil will start to lift so just let that rest and you can get these clamps online also I you know I'm gonna look and see if I can find some links for you and I'll put them in the description below okay and another thing you have to make sure that you keep cleaning this and keep this tinned and that you should have a wet sponge or a wet rag and you want to keep that see how that is like that you want to keep that tinned especially when you put it away you want to make sure that you have a coating of the silver on it so there's there's quite a few different things that you're going to need and that's why I say take a class that just teaches soldering and um, or teaches stained glass so you can learn you know better how to do it so I'm just showing you the process that I do and just to get you uh, give you some inspiration if you ever thought about doing it there's other things you can do once you learn how to solder besides doing a you know stained glass piece like you can have so much fun with these um, really so what I'm going to do next once this all cools down and all that I can't find my little you know loop things what do you call those things oh I can't think of the name of them but the thing that you put on top of the necklace here like this this I can't find them so what I'm gonna do in place of them is um, going to use these little loop things and put them on so I will do that until I can find what I did I know they're in a plastic container somewhere saved but where I don't know I thought I had gotten all my plastic containers out but I am missing one but because I want to get this done I am going I mean you can use these things and these are you know um, what do you call uh, is it findings uh, I think they're for bracelets and you know all that stuff to hook on things see these here and I've used them before for different projects like this to put on the solder you know I've soldered them on so there's all different kinds of ones you can use and they work well they're they're fancier than using the regular little rings and but I don't mind if this is a little fancy so that's okay um so I'm gonna let this cool and then I am going to put these little things and I want to make sure that they're spaced properly and I'm going to keep this little clamp on here to hold this up so I want to make sure I space them properly so I want to come in let's see probably oh, probably about an inch in on each side put the hook the little thing so this way when I hang the chain it it keeps it even um, so about an inch about an inch in so I'll put the first one on and then I'll make sure that 
I like. I'm going to go over this a little bit. This is pretty rough here. So I'm just going to smooth that out and then put the little hook on. I'll be right back. Remember to put flux on the finding or the loop that you decide to use and to the piece that you are going to attach them to. So when you're soldering pieces together, you have to flux both pieces. Okay, so now I am taking some of the silver gleam and putting some on there because I want to put the hook in the, I think I'm doing the bottom here actually. This looks like the bottom. Okay, yeah, this is the bottom because I'm going to put three hooks on the bottom. I already did the two on the top. I couldn't get my hand tell you to stay still. I was having such a hard time. But you have to clip it into a tweezer. These tweezers clip closed. And then you hold your ring or, you know, whatever you're soldering on. And it just holds it for you. Now, you have to make sure you put flux on both the, the ring and where you're going to put it on the uh, piece. So you need the flux or they will not solder together. So it's really important. And here it's finally getting this on. I had to do this five times on this piece. Two on the top and three on the bottom. <laughs> and well, you know that I, I never like doing that. So this is a challenge for me. But it you know works out eventually. So here we go again. I'm just adding some more of the solder because I want to make sure that these don't pop off once I put some beads and dangling things and I'm, I'm planning on putting a lot of stuff so if you are you want to make sure that you have that soldered on really well okay and make sure you constantly clean your tip on your wet sponge or rag because you want to get that excess solder off and you want to keep that tip nice and clean and there I'm just got that one on two more to go Okay, I'm not going to say this is the best soldering job, but I got them down. So, um, and once this is all shined up, you know, it really should have a nice bead going across, but um, I couldn't do it. So, um, that's what I got. And they're on there, and um, they may not all be completely straight, <laughs> but they're on there, and it'll look, it'll look nice. So, um I will let that dry uh, and let that cool off and then clean the silver a little bit and then see what I'm going to hang from it. So I'll be right back. Okay, here I decided to just show you how to put the foil on. Now you see that's the sticky side showing. Now I take a piece of glass and these are one of the pieces that I cut and you have to line it up. You want to make sure that you have both sides have the same amount of copper coming down. I could have used a little bit bigger piece, but I um, this one was out, so my head's in the way. Sorry about that. But I'm just trying to line it up. And it's really hard because it's black and you're using clear glass. <laughs> so usually when I'm doing pieces like this, I use my little copper foiler attacher. It's this little thing that you put the foil in and it rolls like a rolling thing and then you lay your glass and it rolls the copper foil around the glass evenly and I cannot find that either. So um, that makes it a lot easier especially when you're actually doing large pieces uh, for a stained glass project. So here I am, I'm getting it on there. You've got to wrap it all around now. You've got the seam, you're going to have a seam. So you make sure that the seam covers evenly. So you go around and you figure out where you want your seam. I usually seam it at the top if it's something that I'm going to hang. If it's just a piece that I'm going to use in a stained glass piece, it doesn't matter. So here, I'm just trying to get it on. You just press it on. Make sure you get your corners down nicely and everything is even. And you use your little um, utensils, you know, that red 
foiling piece and then I have the one with the little roller on it I will put all the information below I'll try to find as many links as I can and put them in the description below in case you're interested in doing this uh, I'd love love to see you try it but I also think that everyone should take a class if you know somebody that has taken a class that was really good at it have them teach you or in your area look up stained glass um, workshops and see if you can find a workshop in your area and just take a few just so they'll teach you how to cut glass without you know cutting yourself and solder without burning yourself and let me tell you you will cut yourself and you will burn yourself when you first start but it and then then you'll know what you're doing though and um, <clears throat> you'll be doing it at a school and they'll have all the precautions there and safety features for you so, and it really helps when you learn from somebody who has done this a lot and they can explain things to you and just make it so much easier so now here I've got it on and I am going to make sure that I get all the corners down everything nice and neat because when you go to solder it will make a difference so I'm just pressing down with my fingers and then I will use the um, the little I like my little red I don't know what you call it it's a burnisher I guess is that what you do you kinda yeah and I love this one it works very well and you just keep going around and around and around and to make sure that that is sticky and this has been sitting a while mine so I didn't know if the glue was even going to work on the back so you know something that's newer or still in a package will probably stick a lot better and so I was really worried about it sticking so I, I went over my pieces over and over again just to make sure you want to get all the bumps out and just make sure sure all the corners are down nice and flat and neat and nothing is sticking out because uh, you do not want to get that iron hot and then start putting foil on um, I mean start putting solder on and then it starts to lift because that is like the worst thing and then you've got to cool it down take everything off and start all over again and it's just so messy okay so I've got it foiled and what I'm showing you here is that if you don't foil each piece you can't connect the glass together so by foiling each piece when you're doing a large stained glass project now if I wanted to put that little piece onto that big piece I would have to flux both sides and then solder in between there and do a bead and it would attach the two pieces together that's how they attach in stained glass so each piece has to be copper foiled and then soldered together here I'm showing you how uneven that is where it met there so I'm going to take my utility knife and just even it out cut it the copper just go down real easily and then just cut it so this way it's even you want to make sure that your foil is even so just a little extra information I'm trying to give you as much as I know and remember I'm trying to give to you to make it a little easier for you okay so here I put Alice in the uh, diamond shaped glass and this is you can buy this also these pieces and you don't have to even worry about cutting anything so she looks really cool and I did her both sides and I'm going to put a pretty little thing on the top and the bottom and hang jewels and stuff from it and I just love this is actually my favorite one of my favorite pictures my well my favorite and then I have another one that's my second favorite but um, I just love the way that came out and the beveled glass just gives it some depth you know it's just a but you definitely can do this with just regular flat glass from any frame uh, that you have hanging around you buy from the dollar store the glass that's in it once you learn how to cut glass you that definitely cuts well too 
And I'm showing you the little beveled glass pieces, the diamond shape, which are great to have for large projects or just to use. And I printed out some of my girls in a diamond shape. And I have the program Pages for my Mac, and it allows you to mask your picture with a shape. So you can manipulate it in there to fit into the diamond shape. And what I did was I measured the glass first and then went in and got the measurements and then just masked the shape over the picture and figured out, you know, try to get in as much as I could of the girl. And then it comes out real easy. So it's practically almost the same shape. So when you go to cut it, you may want to have to cut it a little bit smaller because I think I made them a hair too big and uh, it worked out great. So that's something to do if you have any programs that you can, you know, resize your pictures and shapes. Also, there's round beveled little glass pieces that I use too and I made things out of. So here I'm just showing you, you can hang all kinds of things. You know, once you put the little round clips or whatever at the bottom and the top, you can, you know, hang your beads and do, you know, fancy this up as much as you want. And I can't wait to finish this one for my daughter, Holly. I just hope she loves it. I'm dying to see her face when she gets it. She has the original, so this is a little extra. Okay, here we are. Now, I just wanted to show you, I almost finished this one. I may do some more hanging from the chain here, but um, for now, you can see I cleaned up the glass and I still probably have fingerprints on it because I had to handle it and I added some uh, this little bird cage that I had some beads and just little things that that I had and uh, you'll see the picture of it hanging so you can see everything hanging it just looks really pretty and I just added a nice I've had this chain for I can't I don't even know seven years maybe so I finally got to use it and I'm going to use it again because it was so long that I had enough for I have enough for another one or actually two more probably and then this is the Alice for my daughter and I will get that finished for her and what you really what I did was I used way too much copper and and way too much solder so you probably want to do it but I like it I wanted it chunky but you really don't need to do that now if you take a class in, on uh, and learn how to solder you're not going to use you this probably much we could do a lot better job you know this is just um, the way I do it for this and if you do solder and you know how to solder um, and you may not want to do something this is pretty heavy so and I wanted to make sure I used a lot of the copper foil because I just wanted to make sure that this doesn't open. I wanted to show you this now with these little diamond things you can just paint right on them and this is all deco art paint and glass paint and I just um, just decorated it and then just added you know little marbles and stuff same thing here another little piece of glass this one I had this button for such a long time no sorry it wasn't a button it was an earring and I took off the back and I just stuck it on the glass there and put a uh, diamond glaze over it so I could hang this, this and that's kinda cool that came out kinda cool and that's it so I'll show you the picture of this one and this one hanging and I'm going to work on this one for my daughter and then this one probably another one for me and then I will start working on and uh, the glass pieces now these are great because I'm going to do with these but I'm just going to do it wrapping the um, let's see wrapping the pretty wire just around thinner wire than that that's too thick around it and just hanging them like that you know with each other and I don't even have to foil so um, that's what I'll be doing with these and that is it I think and I will put a list of items down but you really 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 should take a class but I will put a list of what I used in here and um, put some links for you to 
uh, where I got the glass or where I can find it now because like I said I had gotten it so long ago it's been a, a real a while so and wire all that stuff you can get on Amazon so easily and what I think is really important is getting these little tweezers here they clip together and then they hold and they're great when you're doing these little hooks and stuff because it it locks in so you don't have to hold like that you can just hold it like that and I have such a non steady hand it works out well and then if you want to get yourself some clips this is a plastic one and this really doesn't work that well these are very very hard Ugh. you know you have to be real careful with these I would get I'm sure they these were out seven years ago when I was looking for stuff and they also have those jewelers hands which I have them somewhere I just don't know where with a magnifying glass and um, it's these little clips and you can put your project you can clip onto it and then this is I have no idea what this is called so hopefully it all it does is when you cut the glass you this is the thing you press on and it makes the glass split um, this is the tool to press down and like burnish on your copper that um, this is the rolling one which is okay but I like the other one better um, of course you're going to need a soldering iron and you know it comes with or you can buy different size tips depending on you know what you want to use it for what make what's comfortable for you and then of course the glass pieces uh, and you know you do not have to get these bevel pieces I have done them where I've just cut the glass and done all kinds of different shapes and stuff but cut the glass and made it uh, that way so it's flat glass so you're not having to purchase these bevel pieces you could just get a piece of you know take a piece of glass from your like an old frame and you could cut that up also and then of course the cutter which you can get online the glass cutter the um, the oil um, for your glass uh, cutter you have to have that you have to put the oil in it and um, trying to think of what else what else utility knife that's and oh and then I did use silver polish and I used the actually uh, metal polish cream and this is uh, what is this called blue something blue magic and you get it at the car place um, you clean the chrome like on cars and stuff like that yuck I gotta clean that and that's what I use to clean the silver and Windex, paper towels, baby wipes, um, trying to think of what else I use. Wire cutters to cut the wire for the little pliers. I have different sizes that I use. I have different size wire cutters that I use. And then, of course, any kind of wire, uh, different colors, whatever you want. If you want to use, oh, and I used, uh, what do you call that stuff fishing fishing line fishing this too I use that so got that at uh, I think that was Walmart or something and um, I'll have this for probably ever because I don't think I'm gonna be using this that much but it's great to string your beads on um, I'm trying to think. I think that's it. And then, of course, the copper foil. Oh, you know what I wanted to show you? Yeah, I know I showed you before the copper foil, the black, and, you know, it has the black on the back. But this is the straight one. And then this, you can buy this, like this. This is really pretty. So one side would be a little bit fancier if you wanted to. Really good to have. When you're scoring, when you're cutting glass, your scoring stick is a must-have. Okay, so if I think of anything else, I will put it 
below in the description. If you have any questions, let me know. And if you do this already, that's great. Let me see them. I'd love to see your work. I'd love to see something that you do if I inspire you. But please, please, please be careful. And if you're pregnant, make sure you're not smelling the fumes. I have no idea if they're toxic, but they stink. Um, so I'm not going to say if they're not or they are, but I would definitely, I put a little fan and just blow it out of my way because I don't like smelling it. It gives me a headache. So be careful with all chemicals and knives and glass cutters and just use caution and be very careful and um, safety. Safety comes first and I can't say it enough. If you want to learn how to solder, then take a class. And um, if you're good at online classes like that, that's great for that. But I'm glad I took a live class, went to a glass place, and it was great because these women there, this was in uh, when I was living in Arizona. So it was in Tempe. I can't remember the name of it. Uh, any of you that are from Arizona, you may know. I think they're still around, actually. I don't know. But uh, the women there were fantastic. My gosh, they did. They had been doing stained glass for like years and years and years. And they uh, refurbished uh, old glass like that had broken from churches and old Victorian houses. And, and they fixed them. And they they were amazing those they really were creative inspiration from them and just the technique and the safety precautions alone I think are worth going to a live class so that's all I have to say on the subject uh, and that is probably it for now and I definitely will if I think of anything I will add okay Thank you. I hope you enjoyed this. I hope I inspired you to make some fun things and use your artwork and many ways you can use your artwork and have fun. So I enjoyed this a lot. I'm glad I shared it with you. I hope you enjoyed this and please don't forget to go check out the other artists that are involved in this event. It is hashtag CAC Fantasy Art. And I will put the link below to the playlist and you can go check everybody out. And I am so inspired. I am going to start putting all of my fairies behind glass. And you know that I've done a lot of those. And also this gypsy just is beautiful. And I just love all the dangling beautiful jewels. It just makes me so happy. I hope you're feeling inspired too and if I did inspire you please don't forget to give me a thumbs up and subscribe and until the next time I hope you create wonderful fantasy art and put it in your glass pieces and hang them with jewels and sparkly and just enjoy them so bye bye until the next time <laughs>